In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily install Nessus for free on Kali Linux. Nessus is well known in the industry, allows you to scan for vulnerabilities and then get a report and assess the vulnerabilities on a host or in a network. I'm gonna show you how you can quickly install Nessus on Kali Linux and then do a vulnerability scan of a device. In this topology, I'm using VirtualBox. I've got two virtual machines. I've got a Mr. Robot virtual machine as well as a Kali Linux virtual machine. The Mr. Robot virtual machine was downloaded from Volnhub and I downloaded Kali from the Kali website and I simply downloaded the VirtualBox VM for Kali Linux and imported both of those virtual machines into VirtualBox. Now have a look at some of my other videos which I've linked below that shows you how to install VirtualBox and how to import virtual machines into VirtualBox if you're not sure how to get something like this set up. The goal of this video is to help you get Nessus installed on Kali Linux as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's enough talking. Let me show you how you can get Nessus installed on Kali Linux. Gmail is the most popular email service in the world, but what are you giving up if you use Gmail? In the past, Google used to scan your Gmail messages to sell targeted ads. Now they've stopped that quite a while ago, but that doesn't mean that your email is private. Just have a search online and you'll see things like this, text dirty secret, the app developers sifting through your Gmail. I like this headline, Google says no one is reading your emails except, <laughs> do you really trust Google for privacy? If a government agency wants access to your Gmail messages, they can get access. That's very different to Proton Mail, which uses PGP to give you end-to-end -end encryption. Even Proton doesn't have access to your private key because it's encrypted with a password that only you know. So even if a government agency requested access to your emails, Proton Mail cannot give access to your emails because it's encrypted with your public key and only you have access to your private key. So only you can decrypt your email messages. I get a lot of messages about Proton giving up the IP address of French activists, but I asked Andy Yen about that during our interview, a link below. I asked him the difficult questions about Proton Mail. Now I use Proton Mail, as you can see here. A lot of people in the cybersecurity space use Proton Mail because it gives you end-to-end -end encryption. It allows you to use secure email that protects your privacy. Don't believe that your email can't be read by companies or government agencies. Here's a very interesting take from Fortinet. And we're told that most emails are encrypted while the data is transmitted, but the information is stored in clear text making the content readable by email providers, including companies like Google or government agencies. Popular free to use email services typically do not provide end-to-end -end encryption, which means hackers can easily intercept sent messages, but government agencies or companies such as Google can use your email messages to either target advertising to you or give developers access to your email. I highly recommend Proton for their VPN solution, email solution, and other solutions. I really wanna thank Proton for sponsoring this video. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a web browser, and I'm going to browse to Tenable's website to download Nessus login attempt true, and I'm gonna download Nessus for Linux Debian AMD64, and I'll click download. You need to agree to the license, so click agree, and Nessus will now download. Downloading, downloading, downloading. To help you with this installation, my team and I have created a PDF that you can download, link below, that gives you the URLs and the steps to get Nessus installed. You have both this video as well as the PDF to help you get this up and running. Hopefully this will save you a lot of time. When we created this PDF, the version was slightly older, 10.6.3 versus what I'm demonstrating here. Simply change the numbers used for the installation. Process is exactly the same, however. Okay, so that's now downloaded. It's available in my downloads directory. The next thing we need to do is get the SHA-256 checksum. What I'm gonna do is click checksum and then copy the SHA-256 checksum. I'll open up mousepad and paste that in. Okay, so we need to go to our downloads directory through the terminal and then we need to use this command, echo the checksum that you've downloaded, which will be different to this PDF and the Debian file that we've downloaded. Again, the version that I've downloaded is different to this PDF. So I'm gonna open up a terminal. 
I'm going to go to my downloads directory. So CD downloads. LS shows us that the file has been downloaded. You can see that it's 10.7.2. So the command that we need to use is this command. So it's echo space quotation marks, the hash that was downloaded, the name of the software. So it's this file. So I'll copy that. Make sure that you get rid of any irrelevant spaces. And then we're going to echo that to this file called SHA-256 SumNessus. Okay, so I'll paste that in. Hopefully I've done that right. There you go, if I type ls, there is the file that has been created. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is copy the SHA checksum to make sure that it's correct. Now, one thing I've noticed, be careful in the PDF, this needs to be a hyphen. So make sure that it's SHA-256 sum hyphen C and the checksum name. And what you should see is that the checksum is correct. Again, this is shown in the PDF. Just be careful that that's hyphen C, not dash C. Next step is to install the software. So I'll clear the screen and we're gonna install the software. So the command is sudo apt install and the software that I'm gonna install in my example is Nessus 1072 Debian. Put in my password and as you can see, your software is now being installed. Okay, I do get this error, but it worked in my example. So I'll simply run that again. And as you can see, everything has been installed. So I'm happy with that. Okay, you now need to get your license. So in the PDF, I've given you the link. So you go to the Tenable website. We wanna get the essentials of version, which basically allows us to get the software for free. So put in your details, put in your email address. Okay, you need to put a company name in. So put in your company name and click get started. So we told that we need to check our email for the activation code. So go to your email and get to the activation code, which you now need to continue with the installation. Okay, the next step is to start the service. So I'll clear the screen and paste the command sudo systemctl start nessus d.service. Service has started. And what we can do in our web browser is browse to HTTPS localhost port 8834. I'm gonna to go to advanced, accept the risk and continue. And notice Nessus is now initializing. You just need to wait for it to start up. Okay, so we told welcome to Nessus. So you can click settings to configure proxy, etc. But what we're gonna do is an offline registration and click continue. I'm just gonna go with the default of expert and click continue. Now, to get a license key, you need to visit the offline registration page and enter this code. So I'm gonna click on that, opens up a new tab. What we need to do is copy the challenge code, paste that in here, and then you need to paste in the activation code that you received on your email. So I'm gonna paste in my activation code and click submit. Now we're told that we can get plugins here and we need to copy the license and paste it into the console to begin. So I'm gonna copy this license code and put it in the setup and click continue. Now I can specify a username and a password and click submit. Okay, you can see that the installation is complete. It's now initializing. And at this point, you just need to wait for it to complete the initialization process. And there you go. Notice we're told that no plugins are available. So there's limited functionality. So what we wanna do is go to settings before we create a scan. Notice I can't create a new scan. So go to settings, software update. We're going to update all components, click save. So that'll happen daily. But what we wanna do is do a manual software update. So I'm gonna update all the components and as an example, you could just say update plugins if you like. So we told that plugins will be downloaded, software will be updated. Now, this is gonna take a while. So notice feed to the plugin server was successful and plugins are now being downloaded. But you could, as an example, just update all the components if you want to. This is just gonna take time. So now is a good time to go and get a coffee and wait for this to complete. 
Once again, going to scans, I see nothing here. I can't create a scan. So that tells me that I just need to wait for the process to complete. As you can see at the top here, a lot is happening while the software is being downloaded and installed. So we've got like 100% CPU utilization. You simply need to wait for this installation to complete. While we're waiting for that, let me show you a installation that's already been done. So I'll start up this dev server. And I'll log into that. And what you'll notice is when I go to scans, I can actually select a new scan and now I can run various scans. A whole bunch of scans can be run here, but we simply got to run a basic network scan on a specific device in our network. That device, once again, is the Mr. Robot virtual machine, which I downloaded from Volnhub. Again, the process is quite simple. All I'm going to do is click new scan. I'm going to select basic network scan in this example, give it a name. So something like Mr. Robot. And then I need to scan a target. Now to help me discover that target, I'm simply going to use Nmap and I'm going to scan the network that my device is on. So my Kali virtual machine is in the subnet 192.168.0.0/24. So I'm going to scan that entire network without port numbers so that I can quickly discover the devices in my topology, including that machine. So you can see various devices were discovered, including a TP-Link router. I've got a Philips Lite, but one that I'm interested in is this Oracle device with IP address 192.168.0.149. So we could run an Nmap scan of that device, 192.168.0.149. And we can see that various services are open. So HTTP, HTTPS. Okay, so that's the host that I wanna scan you'd obviously put in the IP address or range of IP addresses of the host that you want to scan. But in my example, 192.168.0.149. Various options are available here. You could schedule the scans to take place at different times. You can get notifications sent to you if you've got SMTP set up. What I'm going to do here is scan all ports on that device. You could just scan for common ports or a custom range, but I'm gonna scan all ports rather than just the well-known port numbers. Assessment, you can change different options here. What we're gonna do is scan for known web vulnerabilities quick, just to speed it up. And for your report, you can decide various options, but I'm gonna just go with those options and click save. And then what you can do is click launch to start the scan. So what you'll see here is this scan, Mr. Robot is now taking place. You could pause it, you could stop it, but what I've actually done is I've run these test scans previously. It's exactly the same type of scan. So I could click on test three because it's now completed. But before I do that, let's have a look at Mr. Robot. You can see that two vulnerabilities have already been discovered. So this is informational information about the device. This will update. But if we look at a report that's already been run, notice we can see a whole bunch of vulnerabilities have been discovered on that device. So just to make the point, I'll click on test two, click more, click configure, and you can see it's the same device. So on test two, notice for this device, same IP address, we have a report showing us that there's one high vulnerability, five medium, one low, and a bunch of info. So if I click on high, you can see that the severity is high, 7.5, SSL certificate signed using weak hashing algorithm. Medium, open SSL, AES. So the remote host is affected by a man in the middle information disclosure vulnerability due to an error in the implementation of Cypher suites that use AES in CBC mode with HMAC SHA-1 and HMAC SHA-256. So various information is given here, but I don't wanna to go too much into the individual vulnerabilities. I simply wanted to show you how you can get Nessus installed on Kali Linux and then run a vulnerability scan against a host. In this example, our Mr. Robot. A virtual machine. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below, did you find this video useful? Let me know what other types of videos you want me to create. And as always, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. That really does help me. Like the video and click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble, and I want to wish you all the very best.